Hello everyone, welcome to the next unit of the globalization and design class. In this new unit, we will talk about three specific methods developed in different companies and teached in different schools all over the world. Those methods are some of the most used nowadays and they have been implemented in many successful products that companies all over the world have designed and produced thanks to their developers and advocates. But first, let's define what is industrial design. According to the World Design Organization, WDO, industrial design is an strategic problem-solving process that drives innovation, builds business success, and leads to a better quality of life through innovative products, services, systems, and experiences. At its heart, industrial design provides a more optimistic way of looking at the future by reframing problems as opportunities. It links innovation, technology, research, business, and customers to provide new value and competitive advantage across economic, social, and environmental spheres. Having that in mind, let's start with the first method, one of the most used ones, user-centered design. User-centered design, or UCD, is an iterative design process in which designers focus on the users and their needs in each phase of the design process. In UCD, design teams involve users throughout the design process via a variety of research and design techniques to create highly usable and accessible products for them. Before getting into the method itself, we need to talk about two persons. First, Henry Dreyfus, a user-centered design pioneer writer of the book Designing for People of 1955, he was one of the most important designers in the styling era that helped the United States tackle the Great Depression, but most importantly, a designer that took the function into consideration, and not only the aesthetics. For example, in the design of this phone. And second, Donald Norman, writer of the book the Design of Everyday Things of 1988, he is one of the biggest user-centered design advocates of modern days, a key piece in the rise of Apple as a company, and a professor of many sciences related to design, he has established the importance of designing products with the user at the center of everything. They both based themselves in an iterative method meaning that you will repeat the cycle as many times as possible until the design is right. That begins with the observation phase, where you are going to look at the problem, then the idea generation phase, where you are going to propose how to solve the problem, then the prototyping phase, where you are going to fabricate your solution, and finally, the testing phase where you are going to test that solution and, once again, observe what happens in order to repeat the cycle if it is necessary. This method is based on two principles that every product should have. The discoverability, or the ability to discover what operations one can do, and the feedback, or a signal of what happened once you did something with the product. The second method that we will explain is design thinking, a method that can have a different amount of phases depending on the needs and way of working of the people that are applying it. It can be defined as an iterative process in which we seek to understand the user, challenge assumptions, and redefine problems in an attempt to identify alternative strategies and solutions that might not be instantly apparent with our initial level of understanding. This method is used in companies like Apple, Google, Samsung, and General Electric, and is taught in universities like the school, Stanford, Harvard, and MIT. In this method, we also have an expert, founder of IDEO, and also a key piece in the success of many companies and products, Tim Brown. He said, design thinking is a human-centered approach to innovation that draws from the designer's toolkit to integrate the needs of people 
the possibilities of technology and the requirements for business success. Regarding the method itself, we are going to briefly explain the one imparted in the Hasso Plattner Institute of Design at Stanford that has five phases. Empathize with your users, define your users' needs, their problems, and your insights, ideate by challenging assumptions and creating ideas for innovative solutions, prototype to start creating solutions, and finally, test those solutions. It is important to note that the five phases, stages, or modes are not always sequential. They do not have to follow any specific order and can often occur in parallel and repeat iteratively. Design thinking also involves ongoing experimentation, sketching, prototyping, testing, and trying out concepts and ideas. The third and last method that we are going to explain is biomimicry. This method is a practice that learns from and mimics the strategies found in nature to solve human design challenges and find hope along the way. And the most important person that applies it is Janine Benius. In 1998, she co-founded the Biomimicry Guild with Dr. Dania Baumester. That consultancy morphed into Biomimicry 3.8, a B Corp social enterprise providing biomimicry consulting services to clients like Boeing, Colgate Palmolive, Nike, General Electric, Herman Miller, HOK Architects, IDEO, Natura, Procter & Gamble, Levi's, Kohler, and General Mills. She divides the application of this method in three different ways of mimicking nature. First, mimicking form or shape, basing your product in the shapes that nature has to fulfill an objective. Second, mimicking process or whole ways of working inside nature. And third, mimicking whole ecosystems into economic systems, cities or organizations just like nature does it, but always having the ability to adapt it to our technology. This method is based on the premise that nature has been around for millions of years, millions of years of trial and error. The solutions are out there. We just need to develop the ability to implement that in the way we live and in our own solutions. So, these are some of the methods of design used throughout the world, applied in different companies, by different designers, and teached in many universities. It is important to note that you can use more than one at the same time, and these are not the only ones used all over the world. It will be up to you to search for examples of actual products developed with one or more of these design methods to understand them further and be able to use them when is best.